All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, hopefully you can see us. We're about a minute until the show starts. We are just double checking that all the live streams are going live. It looks like Facebook is going to kick us off right at two after. So we'll give everybody a chance to check in. We'll give them a minute or two. And so it's cool about today's show for everybody. If you don't know, um, we haven't switched seats. <laughs> but Maria is going to be producing the show today I am, instead of me. I do my best. So. so I'm excited about that. Is there any hiccups? Bear with me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to do great. I'm I'm actually super excited to have Maria doing the show today because she is going to be uh, she will be doing the show while I'm out next week at Big C. Yes. One woman show here on the back end. Yes. We'll still have Tyler. He'll be acting as our guest, though. He'll be calling in. Be your guest. Yes. All right. We're giving everybody a minute to check in. So as you arrive, y'all, check in. Hit the, uh, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on YouTube, check in. I'm running the social comments, social yes. media today. So I'm looking the at the screen. And screening all the comments that come out. Yes. <laughs> and making sure that they all say, Maria, you're doing an amazing job. We are so proud of you. What a great job. Yeah, negative ones won't be added to the screen, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we have the power. Fantastic. And I'm excited. So uh, I'm excited about the show today. Me I've got too. Some, it should be a good one. Yeah. we got a very cool guest. Mike and I were talking about what we were going to talk about just before we kicked off the live stream. He's got some very interesting conversations. Oh, good. So everyone, uh, we're just waiting a minute to make sure that Facebook agrees that we are actually going live because yes. uh, Facebook can be a little bit fickle like that. Um, but if you guys have any questions, um, definitely shout them out, check in where are you guys from, what we're talking about, and we will have a fun show today. You know, if you want to tell us your New Year's resolution, we're about midway through the, the first month of the new year, but you know, let us know your resolutions for this year. It's yeah, a new decade. It is a new decade. So, all right. Well, uh, we should be live with Facebook and uh, YouTube. So, why don't you kick us off, Maria? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, y'all. I'm really pumped about today's show and our today's special guest. I met our guest over a box of Bean Boozled Beans <laughs> last year. That's a tongue twister. Uh, we shared a rotten egg, a vomit bean together. In fact, uh, this particular guest won our Infocom 2019 video competition based on the number of views. And I totally know why people voted for this. So if you missed it, let's bring up the highlights. Go ahead, Marie, and bring up the highlights. Should be V9. I've seen some terrible videos about this, so. All right, we get buttered popcorn or rotten egg. <laughs> no. I already know what's going to come. Buttered so. popcorn. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I said that one. <laughs> Are we going to make him swallow, guys? Does he have to actually swallow? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> rotten egg. Who invented this? All right, Mike, only one more to go. Can somebody get the guy some water? Oh, my water. Lord. No water. No water. You're not going to let no him water. have water. Oh, All right. These guys are hardcore. They're making swallow. No now water. I know why I got picked. All right, peach or barf? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I got it. This is nice. <laughs> it's the aftertaste that's the worst. Oh. You're making me barf. <laughs> <laughs> this game is wrong. <laughs> oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is, we've been, we're here at Lumens. I'm with Mike. This has been great. I think you won. I don't I, know. Yeah, two to one. Yeah, two to one. I won. So congratulations to Mike. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was so quality good. entertainment. If you, we were just talking about this type of entertainment. Was the bark like as bad? Did it? How bad was it? The vomit one. It, the first bite isn't like the first as you bite it, but it's that lingering like aftertaste. Oh, aftertaste. It, it, they they do a good job with the smell because the smell kind of permeates oh. your mouth, and it 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 was awful. You're and, a trooper, Mike. Oh, Mike was a trooper. <laughs> but now he's back on our show 
Um, and fortunately for him, this time we're not going to make him eat gross beans. We are going to really cover the topic and get the inside track on what's developing in streaming and production technology. So, all you streamers out there, jump on the chat line, check in, let us know what questions you have about streaming or about POE, and, um, and, and while I kick off the show. So, um, to kick off the show, I'm going to introduce the newest innovation from POE Texas, the GBT4IW. So go ahead, Maria. Let's switch right on over. We're going to go, uh, we'll do the intro video and then I'll do the, the product. Oh, sorry, guys. You got it. You got it, Maria. You got it. Yep. First, let me open this up. First, let me open this up. All right, we're back. We're gonna, I, I totally threw Maria for a whole bunch of curves <laughs> on this. Um, this. This is all my production style. Sorry, Sorry about Maria. that, guys. So it's Tyler Andrews here, the head nerd at Pewee, Texas. And today's show is brought to you by the GBT 4-in wall. There we are. Uh, it's the, the in wall. As well. This stylish device cuts navel, cuts tongue-tied network cable infrastructure by up to 75%. Whether you need to add network devices and can't install any more cables, or whether you're just ready to reduce your cabling runs, the new GBT 4IW combines up to four cables onto one. Simply use one Ethernet cable to send PoE to this device and connect four ports of PoE in a very stylish in-wall mount. So, let's check how to use this guy. First, let me open this up. I always love to do an opening with a new product has that new product smell. The only thing you have to have available on your network to install the GBT4IW is Power Over Ethernet or PoE. Don't know what PoE is? Check out our video here. Don't have PoE? No problem. PoE Texas has a Texas sized line of PoE products to fit almost any network and any budget. Check them out here. The GBT4IW works with any type of PoE from traditional 802.3 AF PoE and PoE Plus all the way up to the new high powered PoE. The type of PoE you have will determine what power budget you have available on your GBT4IW. To get the most out of your GBT4IW, you can take advantage of the new IEEE 802.3 BT Type 4 PoE to get up to 60 watts of PoE power on this device. I'll get to the power calculation in just a second. Though. The GBT4IW installs into any single gang switch box or low voltage mounting ring. All you need is one network cable into the box or to the ring. First, remove the cover plate. Second, plug in the network cable with PoE into the back of the device. Check that you have power with the blue LED light. Then, mount the GBT4IW like you would any switch or wall device. Finally, press on the cover plate. Et voila, you're ready to go. There's no configuration required. The GBT4IW acts like a network switch. It will get IP addresses automatically from your main router or switch. There's nothing left to do but plug in your device. Well, there is one more thing to think about to get the very most out of your GBT4IW, your power budget. Remember I flashed the power information up on the screen earlier? 
Let's go back to that for a second. As I told you, the GBT4 IW can take power from any PoE switch. So if you have a regular PoE switch, your GBT4 IW will have a 10 watt budget. That means you can power something like an IP phone using PoE and connect three other network devices, whether they're a computer, Wi-Fi access point, or point of sale station. If you have PoE Plus, your GBT4 IW will have a 22 watt budget. That means you can plug in three, maybe four IP phones and a computer, or you can add one GAT USB-C PD to send power and data to your iPad Pro Gen 3 or Surface Go. However, to get the very most out of your GBT for IW, you can connect it to IEEE 802.3 BT Type 4 PoE and have a full 60 watt PoE budget. That's two PoE Plus devices or four full capacity PoE devices. For example, you could use four of our PoE to iPad adapters all in one cable. All right, guys. Well, thank you for doing that. And hey, Matt, thank you for checking in and say and giving some love for our new product. We're very excited about it. Yes. And then uh, also, uh, I'll just throw up here that uh, Roger Miles checked in from the UK. Hey, Roger. From the UK. Thanks nice for joining you. us. We're excited. So, guys, keep checking in. Um, get your questions and comments ready. Uh, my And while you do that, my lovely co-host, Miss Maria Medell, uh, will introduce our guest, and I'll be fielding your questions today. Yes. Thank you, Tyler. And welcome back, everyone. I'm glad that you're joining us today to kick off our first live stream of the new decade. It's officially 2020. We made it. <laughs> and exciting things are happening for us this year. But let me start off by introducing our guest for today's show, Michael Mito. Uh, Mike is currently a zone manager for Lumens Integration, Inc. And he's based out of Houston, Texas, my hometown. Um, and he has been with them for nearly 14 years already. So he's a veteran. Um, he's no stranger to being in front of the camera with us either. Back in August 2019, I did meet up with him here in Austin at the TAB 2019 Ooh, show. Yeah, he's, he's been a popular guest on our show he many has, times. He's our celebrity. <laughs> um, and he uh, got to get his thoughts on the broadcasting market at that show. And then he has, uh, with, the B, with the Bachelor of Arts in Radio and Television from UT Arlington, he'll definitely be a great guest today. He's probably very camera ready and ready to go. So be sure to ask him um, also about his Donnie and Marie story. Ooh, you don't want to miss out on that one. It Donnie and Marie. Very good. So thanks for being with us today, Mike. Thank you. I, I only have one question. What's that? Where do I get a <laughs> I need a lab coat. That lends so oh. much credibility to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks we for can having me, guys. You, we can hook you up, Mike. But I, I, you know what? I'm actually just a little, just a scotch disappointed you didn't wear your PUE Texas t-shirt. Truth be told, it's uh, when you have people that eat candy on camera for, for entertainment, you probably need a little bit bigger size. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> Well, I got a bigger size for you, Mike. We'll send it to you because you were such a champion. Right, and now you're even being a guest on our live stream, which is awesome. Your shirt is being worn. It is on campus at Texas State. So my oh, son has good. it on property. I asked him to send me a picture, but he, he's not responding right now. So <laughs> it's getting used. We now have a Princess of POE oh. version, too. Yeah, you should, you should show off your Princess of POE version shirt. I will rock it one nice. day. Nice. Well, cool. Well, y'all out there, this is your chance to have any questions about streaming, video production, or POE because Mike is that expert, as Maria talked about. And and we were talking before the show, he has all these great opinions, great ideas of what's going on. So hit the chat line. Any questions you have, this is a totally open conversation. Um, don't feel like, you, you know, we have to be talking about POE, um, but... Talk about what's important to you, what you want to know about with streaming. And we're going to kind of seed the conversation uh, for you here. So I'm going to hit Mike with my first question. Mike, you get to see what's happening on a global level with streaming and live production. So, and I think you brought up a very interesting topic. I hope you bring it up again. What do you ha see happening in the near term with streaming? Well, 
I think the biggest thing right now for us and really for for the market is the what streaming opens the door for. I think in traditional ways, what we discussed a little bit about was, you know, traditionally giant enterprise companies and giant media conglomerates are the, were the only ones that really had an effective platform for um, advertising, for getting their message and getting their products to market and, and getting their messages known. I think about traditional, you know, television channels. Uh, I'm I just turned 55 years old last year, so I remember watching three or four channels and not having really the only access to advertising were billboards, radio ads, and TV ads. Today, there is an unlimited amount of, of, of opportunity for advertising, for messages, for content of all levels. Uh, we talked also just about the um, the 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 way we access content, whether you're accessing, again, through traditional TV, through through cable channels, or on the internet. Um, one, of, one of the most interesting trends for the internet is the fact that I think there will be, it'll be mostly video content. Uh, one of these stats I saw was 82% of the internet traffic will be video related content by the year 2022. That's a huge number from traditional internet traffic. I, I know that it also affects everything about the internet, uh, just from your home network to your corporate networks to, you know, industrial and again, enterprise networks, it changes the game on what you have to build. So from hardware all the way through content, um, I think there are going to be a tremendous amount of companies that will focus in that space. Uh, Lumens is one of them. Uh, video over IP is the future. Oh, yeah. Now, I think an important feature, and we'll, we'll actually pro probably come back to this in, later in the conversation, when you talk about that advertising, what I think is really important to consider is that, uh, that we, we're we also finding that you viewers can be a lot more discerning on the content that they actually watch. We were talking about, like, with my daughter, she, uh, she I, I have a little eight-year-old, she's never, she's only lived with the streaming world, she's never had cable, <laughs> yeah. she's never watched commercials. When we go to a hotel and turn on the TV, she's like, Daddy, what's this weird little show they keep putting on? <laughs> why can't I change it? <laughs> yeah, why can't I change it? I'm trying to fast forward. And, and I was explaining that for her, she feels no obligation to the narrative structure of the shows. If she doesn't want to see something, she'll fast forward it. If she doesn't, if she likes something, she'll rewind it and replay it a couple times. And I think that's really true for, uh, as, you're, as we're talking about this new platform, it is an obligation now that viewer that producers have to produce content that customers want to actually watch. You can't just do a 30 second ad spot listing the benefits of your product. You actually have to produce something that people want to watch and figure out how that integrates your product or service into it. Right, absolutely. But yeah, it's essentially viewer's choice at the end of the day. Yeah. So with that, you mentioned production. I mean, producers and, and content delivery, all of these industries that had a traditional production value or history, that's all changing now. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that especially with your type of company, um, what you're building, how you're helping that infrastructure develop is critical to the future and to the development. You know, back in the day with um, Broadcast AV, we, we used to talk about the convergence of the, you know, of the IT with the video world. And now it's developing a step further to include now that video content over the IP. Um, I don't really see well, I shouldn't say I don't really see. Some things take time. It will take time to transition, but I also remember the transition from our analog world to our digital world in the television, in the broadcast industry. I learned in an analog world, I was away from the industry for a few years. I come back in and it's a different game altogether. And now we're in that transition again. We're, we're in a transition where you need to know and you need to have an understanding of the IT world, especially the IP IT world and the technologies that are being developed for that. Lumens as a company are focused on video over IP as a as a future position for hardware. And I think you'll see more organizations that are absolutely using um, a, their key business strategy as 
delivering content over the internet, whether it's training, whether it's actual information, uh, you know, whether it's your your product or service, if you're not looking at video over IP or looking at production value with video over IP, then you're not really you know, trending, if you will. But I see all of these trends developing and I see a whole host of companies that will jump in and be maybe, you know, I, I see a next generation of companies where there aren't even traditional broadcast um, needs for their information or for their products and content. So like you said, you, I asked you the question earlier, do you have cable? Do you have any, do you watch network or, or, or terrestrial TV at all? You said, no, uh, I have six kids, not a single one of them have any access to local news feeds. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> but <laughs> local news feeds, you know, and believe me, they know, Advertisers know this. That's why you can't hardly watch a video on the internet that doesn't have both the giant media conglomerates advertising right down to the jujitsu shop up on the corner somehow knows I'm watching YouTube <laughs> and is able to feed content directly into my feed. And then how amazing it is that when you're talking in your own home about going camping, then the next ad in your Facebook feed is, you know, camping gear. That's kind of weird. Amazing is the word I would use for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That would be amazing. Yeah. Hey, but, uh, you know, we got some special guests on both, uh, as I'm looking at the people checking in, uh, Tom Willis is a, is a great viewer. He's been with us for a long time. He does, I've seen his work uh, on YouTube where he talks about IP cameras. We also have a, um, a special guest, Matt. Uh, Matt checked in earlier, Matt Davis. He does video over IP, and I think you, you brought up a very interesting point. And, and guys, if, if this is not what you want to talk about, but let us know with the comments but uh matt i would be curious and, and mike too the same question what are the ip technologies that video producers need to start becoming familiar with uh, what what are the uh, what areas of knowledge do you need to develop well again i i think with Primarily, you need to know how to make that video happen on the internet, which lets we can put aside production value. Um, we, we've talked about NDI, for instance, this new network device interface that, new, that was developed by NewTek. Um, I think it's, it is trending hard to become you know, the protocol of choice uh, because of the latency issues. All video over the internet you know, at some point is gonna develop a, um, some level of latency until and as we develop better protocols um we you know rtsp you know we we have all these different platforms that we're able to get into and i think that if you're not understanding or learning ndi or other protocols like ndi then that's definitely where you need to be focusing some attention that's a good point uh, and so for all you viewers out there if you're familiar with ndi or you're not hit us with questions uh Mike is an expert on NDI. I know a little bit more about the PoE side, and I can talk to that. And um, definitely, Matt, uh, weigh in on NDI. Now, I we were, and I would be curious, and I'm going to pose this to you, Mike, and everybody out there: the relative merits of NDI versus SDVoE versus just streaming the uh, just streaming, pulling a data stream for your IP camera uh, out there. What are the relative benefits and costs that you run into? Well, that that again goes back to what we at Lumens are trying to do with our camera technology. For instance, we we understand that where the IP needs are coming from, um, you can still buy some you know very expensive cameras and convert signals. But what's happening and what's trending is is the is trying to use the you know or spend the least amount of money in some applications and have you know leaning on the network more than you're leaning on the production hardware if the production hardware cameras can have a stream coming directly out of the camera that you can choose different stream options whether it's h.265 or mpeg and then of course and so you guys understand or so the, the you know your viewers understand the ndi technology we we were one of the companies that were, were 
key in developing one of the first cameras. Um, we are competitors, the big S companies and P companies, they have the technology. New Tech made that cut that technology available we are we are now in our fifth generation of development with that technology um one of the really neat things if i could i don't know if this is an aside or if this is driving where we were driving but one of the cool um i saw i saw recently about using um vlc to feed directly Mm. into ndi so that using vmix for instance you could record independent channels um VLC does not is not capable of being recorded directly to uh, vMix, but and then you add back in uh, NDI or New Text technology. They have their ISO recorder channels or ISO recorder softwares that are free, and you can record using NDI directly into their applications, which are really cool. You can get that that New Tech tool pack for Windows. A lot of those applications have a free level of the software, and there are a bunch of them, a bunch of really cool ones for signal conversion, signal recording. Um, so, you know, getting your, your cameras to feed into the NDI streams so that they can then be used different ways at the, at the far end or at the other IP is where it's at is where this technology is coming all together and i know i again i've been studying i've been reading i've been trying to keep up and there there are a lot of companies out there developing um, protocols for exactly what we're, we're talking about so i think that's very cool what you were talking about the vlc conversion maybe and i'm a tech guy so of course i'm going to bring up the tech question mm-hmm. um and, and i'll pose this to you guys out there in the field would it be is there an application for some of you to have an edge device, meaning something you would install near the camera that could take in a whole range of, of streams and convert it into NDI and send it back. Ooh, because you know we're, we're partnering with the guys over at Simply Nook and you know you could take a little micro PC, make it PoE powered and then have an HDMI input. You can, and it can all be PoE powered and then your device, whatever that device may be, goes onto that NDI network. Anyway, vote guys. Mike, what do you think? Would something like that be useful? I, I, I yeah, absolutely. Again, we have, is this a great time to bring in what, what we are, you know, what I have that's kind of new and cool? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, I'm just going to make sure Maria knows. when We've got that video. Okay. It's queued up. Whenever you're ready, Mike, just tell us the video you want when you're ready for us to put that up. Well, for instance, here's our appliance, our new our new little edge device, I guess you will, if you will. Yeah. It is our it is our lecture capture system, our, our, our media content or capture device, the LC200, the LC standing for lecture capture, but we're trying to call it more than that. It is it is a an appliance that'll allow you to record and stream simultaneously. Um, one of the cool features of it, uh, it's a four input, unit but i can record five channels i can record each independent channel and the mix channel and stream to three different channels simultaneously that that's a neat device because it it does solve a lot of you know issues when you're trying to develop or build your streaming platforms Um, we're seeing churches we're seeing corporate offices training offices government installations where that's exactly what they want to do you don't always have to record all that content and all that information because it will also act as a pass-through device for observation. Uh, One great application that we had recently was in a simulation lab at a hospital. Um, They are recording sometimes the content for playback and training uh, purposes, but they're also sometimes simply observing the room for other reasons just to you know talk into the room and sometimes get you know get feedback from their students or from their professors so that also solves that problem where some of the other appliances don't have that some of the other softwares don't have that it has a one terabyte internal hard drive so it can record 500 plus hours at the highest quality of content and that storage is expandable so i think you're going to see again coming you know, being in the industry, watching some of the other companies, some of the other companies that have had some of these appliances where their issues were, those questions and those those roadblocks are being solved almost daily um, by companies that have complementary 
hardware that's cre that's allowing other companies to develop you know turnkey pieces um, this box is easy 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 where you plug in these new ip cameras you're getting your signal you're getting your 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 ip channels are addressed instantaneously your switches are doing the same thing you're providing video i mean it's it's not going to be far from from where we are now where you're going to be able to go remote in a field with no generator plug all this stuff in that's battery powered and, and create broadcast level content you know not for short periods of time but still you you'll be able to do it remotely it opens up the door for unbelievable application and that's where you know that's where i see the future everyone's going to be able to create content it's not going to be expensive it's not going to be hardware restrictive it's going to be real simple to do ah yes yeah, so you bring up a good question um that i'm thinking about and that's the in real life but let me bring up something by the way tom tom was telling us that is a 70 year old he's having a hard time capturing this technology uh i, I gotta admit I watch Tommy stuff and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this guy is kicking me around. He's doing much better than I did. Um, but uh, so uh, Richard did say that a self-powered PUE box that would provide a, for point to point or wireless bridges would be great and self-powered using rechargeable batteries like you were talking about, Mike. And that's, um, that is actually very cool. Now I know Paul uh, Richards over at PTZ Optics, the streaming geeks guys, um, he does have an in real life camera rig system, and, the, and people are 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 really uh, starting to put them together. Most of them are home built kits. There's not a lot of pro kits out there that are battery powered. Um, question for you, Mike, and, and you guys out there: Would a uh, it, it, and does anybody know of a portable or mobile? production system so if i'm actually live running around with my camera can i what like what's the easiest and best way to produce my show because a lot of the technology is around getting you connected getting it back mm -hmm. over wireless to your streaming platforms but um and i don't know matt, maybe matt you know i don't think tom or i don't think paul has tried to produce as well as is record is that out there does anybody know about that? I'm not. I'm not going to weigh in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you guys know Richard, Tom, Matt, anything out there like that, that would be very cool. Um, to that, that may be an interesting conversation, but kind of a side conversation. But yeah. it does sound like a uh, a point to point wireless system for Richard would help him out because. He uh, he had mentioned he's doing jet ski racing broadcasting, which frankly I think is just awesome and cool. I didn't know that was a thing. It is a thing. That is so cool. And you know, cool. Mike, you were telling me another application that's a big deal because it's coming into the educational space. I would never have guessed this, but Mike was telling me, and Mike can go into more on this, is that uh, schools are now considering eSport and eSport streaming as a viable school event so mike you you know more about this i just kind of introduced video it. games as an esports well e yeah wow well e yeah not not to teach how to play video games these kids already know how to do that it's really about yeah. they're competing online against each other and again the advertisers are seeing unreal numbers of people that will log in to watch two other people or five or you know however many people play against each other and then they want to learn obviously how to you know not only create the 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 platform that's what we're talking about is how do you build the platform to get into that um and that's yeah education is definitely going to be hit with having to provide some level of curriculum related to esports because it's billions and billions of dollars already. Um, there's already a whole culture of esports out there. Um, when I first started thinking of esports, I was I thought the same thing. Wait, I'm gonna what? Learn how to what? No, and that's not it. It's not <laughs> learning how to play the video games. It's all of these. It's those kids and those those people playing against each other and calling it a sport. Like I'm competing yeah. against you, and people want to watch that. Um, just this last week at FETC, um, there were a few dozen companies with esports as a as a 
focus our own booth we had an esports section in our booth um, two or three of our larger dealers had esports as a focus in their booth um, and what you're probably wondering what does that mean well a couple of our dealers they've gone to the level of building computers that play games you mm -hmm. take that and now you have furniture that is focused on you know playing the game and then where we come in we we build cameras and that's something that has to somehow be incorporated your stream from your computer mm -hmm. has to go somewhere and be mixed with another stream of you they want to see what you're doing so much like you know we have our picture in a picture of me and talking to you there's a picture in a picture of a of a, of a i don't i keep saying kids i shouldn't say kids an athlete a who an athlete yeah. <laughs> an, an electronic athlete who's going to show you what he's touching how he's touching it how he's moving his controller or his mouse and keyboard so these are crazy so there are now like i'm reading from richard yes there are esport uh, oh, yeah. scholarships that are happening wow. um at least two of at least two of my sons have called home and said oh uh, they're gonna be professional esports people and i'm like yeah okay <laughs> well come on home and, go ahead right. and get a job and get an apartment but that's that's a reality. Uh, it's a massive, massive market, not only for the esports participants and viewers, but for again advertisers. You know, getting out your message, selling the hardware. I um, mean, we, we like we're just a tiny part of that, and that's the the viewing side, the the hardware side. But your products again, um, uh, the network products, the the connectivity products, all of that is a you know, if you're not looking at esports as somewhere you should be advertising your products, it's time because it's out there, and there are companies that are popping up that that's their entire focus because there's billions of dollars out there for that and it's going to get bigger it's not going to get smaller uh, already yep. they're saying that esports is bigger than the nfl so that is anyone else seeing that same trend financially well, it is the, the yeah. they just built an esports arena i think obviously probably out in california but it is huge and it is beautiful to me it's an actual yeah. esports arena just for video game competitions I think they said that a live attendance for an eSport event did exceed the Super Bowl attendance. That's so cool. and, and that was just, and, and, but then the, the numbers for the online attendees was just beyond. Astronomical. It was astronomical. <laughs> they were just like, they, they, it, Super Bowl would pay a lot of money to get that kind of attendance. So yeah, Mike, I think you're making the right call. So for all of you streamers out there, guys who are doing the streaming, uh, keep this in mind. This is a real viable opportunity, and we're not. This isn't just like some distant companies. This is high schools, like Mike's pointing out, high schools, colleges, communities. Um, I bet you're going to see leagues popping up of esports, and they would pay to have professional streaming equipment, expertise, and knowledge. And advertisers are paying for the space, so there's there is money to be made out there. Mm -hmm. That is a very interesting point. Because they would be sponsored too, I'm well, assuming, I, right? They would have sponsors. Yeah, these these are sponsored events. Wow. Yeah, I mean, already, and like you said, in the colleges, there are already entire leagues. Uh, you mm -hmm. you can go to college and join a league of whatever game it is you're trying to do. Uh, that. Um, I imagine in the I I, pro I haven't seen it myself, but I imagine in the future there will be entire colleges focused on just that as curriculum and and that again is going to come from you know that will include learning the games that will also include um um the hardware learning the hardware learning learning how to develop the backbone and the the entire procedure yeah so <laughs> and, and so on that topic mike you had showed us the lc 200 uh which is a powerful tool for producers what other technology uh what other technology is coming down the pipeline to make it easy for producers to produce films uh produce for online content so we saw the lc200 any other things you're seeing yes I, wh what i'm seeing is the the hardware becoming less expensive um the hardware becoming in some cases more robust with connectivity options but i think you'll start seeing almost uh where you'll have really inexpensive cameras that have very few options it'll be so specific that it'll become very affordable for anyone mm. i mean again that's 
we we started with I think of cell phones as a as a as a progressive technology. The yeah. phones were getting littler and littler and littler and littler, and now they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger because because of the content. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, the phone wasn't able to you know play the video or create music or or all the other things that now it's assumed it can do. Now it's you know, you're going to be carrying around this LCD panel and, and that'll be your phone. And it, they're getting bigger because people want to look at them. They want to view them. So I think the that same trend is going to is going to translate to the hardware that you see um, production switchers. They're going to realize that, you know, we don't need all of these other things. They're great if you're in a studio. You know, you're still going to have your wraparound studio console with every possible option. But as you said, maybe I just need a picture and a picture and a transition so that I can go and, and sit on the back of a boat and watch another boat or go sit in an arena and do a production that has every bit the value and every bit the quality because the cameras, the, the well, and this has happened too. I'll take a little side, a side thought. You think about TV back in the day. I remember selling cameras to producers who were producing content for National Geographic, for instance. They had to have the best cameras sold because National Geographic's quality level was so high. Now you see video on a daily basis from cell phones on TV, even network, even broadcast. So our expectations of video, it seems like even the even the even the networks have figured out we don't care as much as you do about that quality. We just want to see it. So you're getting live feeds from cell phones and live feeds from webcams, live feeds from, you know, cameras mounted on poles in the middle of nowhere, because it's not about quality. It's about seeing that content instantaneously. It's about the instantaneous message or instantaneous information that we require. So I think that trends through to the hardware, I think that trends through all the way into the software. Um, again, I think of editing software, video editing software back in the day was expensive and hard and, and you know, for, well, before hard, before software is hardware, and then we went software, and now we're right down to editing video on your phone again. So everything's trending to where one thing does more, one thing is less expensive, and that opens the door for every level of production because every boutique company in the world can now have a presence online. Every boutique product in the world can now have millions, potential millions of viewers or millions of hits or millions of, of uh, you know, exposure, depending on what market you're trying to hit. Mm -hmm. So I think you just, we can talk for hours on, different applications I'm, and there as I stand in, in in trade shows and I get to meet these producers who are looking for these products and these trends the stuff that they've come up with for <laughs> for a business is is a really amazing it's what I love to hear um, and that's you know I would throw it out there what's one of the coolest things what's what's something cool trending that you've seen and and how do you see it affecting you know our society as a whole yeah hit the chat lines guys give us that information um, while we while you're doing that, uh, Tom did ask the question: uh, Are K twelve K through twelve schools investing in this type of technology? And I think both from the the esports, but just in general in streaming, it looks like Lumens. You guys have invested heavily to develop the LC two hundred. It is it is crafted around the idea for your school classroom application. I would have assumed they would be a lot of colleges and universities, but are K through 12 schools investing in streaming technology and those opportunities? That is exactly the trend that I'm talking about because I would say five to 10 years ago, a, a broadcast quality pan tilt zoom camera might cost eight to ten thousand dollars most k-12 schools weren't going to put one in an auditorium or in a in a gymatorium or in their production facilities over cost alone 
we now are getting daily phone calls on ideas for uh, I have one high school right now. They just want to point a PTZ camera at the scoreboard and point one camera on a wide shot of the of the basketball court. And that's their idea right now of, of being able to share their, their sports live, their real sports live. Um, football in Texas is big. The camera prices and costs <laughs> have dropped so much. Uh, there's not going to be a high school out there that doesn't want to either – track and follow their their star athletes um, <clears throat> or just provide the content for those that can't fit into the stadium or can't make it to the stadium. Everyone can watch everything now because of the trending costs going down. And it's not just corporations. It's not just advertisement. Um, every church out there now, back in the day, it was only the big churches that had podcasts or or, vid, or vlogs or, or, you know, now even the smallest churches. I don't go to a great big church, but our church, I can watch every service live. I can watch every service after the fact. I can watch specific messages from our pastor on his own personal vlog and his own Facebook page. So I think, again, it opens up an unlimited amount of, of application potential, and the K-12 schools know this. They're teaching it. I'm, I remember, again, it was a weird trend when I was coming through high school where they wanted to help and have classes for production, and they were limited. They were usually small, and only so many kids could get in because of the cost to make those classes happen. I can see now where schools would be crazy not to not only have a production class, but have levels of production classes. You could literally do a four-year program in a high school and build up to broadcast. You don't even have to go all the way to broadcast. You might teach a specific course on corporate video, on corporate um, well, my son, for instance, he's like, Dad, I want to do marketing and I want to be very specific to the video side of social media. And that's pretty specific. You know, and that's pretty words, smart. Being I specific. Know, yeah, I need to know how to be the best in social media on these different um, um platforms developing video and and the, what do you think the first thing i told him having a degree in broadcasting i said well don't forget the broadcasting side or the not the broadcasting the production value side of what you're trying to do lighting sound you know the aesthetics of the image all of those things still have to be learned or at least acknowledged as we push into these you know curriculums and educations i think you're going to see levels and i think you'll see you know the, the the level of equipment up and down across the board yes well and speaking of which uh pm and i apologize i don't know pm's your name yet but uh you can let us know if you want or, or keep it quiet but uh you had mentioned that there is the k through 12 esport trade show going into this on this year in chicago Tell us the name of this trade show. I'm excited to hear about it. This sounds like it would be a very unique and very interesting trade show. So, so throw it up in the chat. What's the name of the show? Any kind of dates we want to know. Um, yeah, I think that's very cool. But I, Mike, you're also bringing up a really important topic that, that we need to really address. And that is what can't technology do? Like I, I'm, a, I'm a technology guy. I believe tech can do just about anything but and i'm going to ask the audience out there to chime in what can't tech do in for streaming and production value i'll tell you one thing uh, and this is a I, I, this is kind of personal and a little bit funny my wife is a, a 30 year librarian so you can imagine i give her a lot of a lot of grief about why do we need libraries you know, I, I just Google it, just go to Wikipedia. This drives her crazy because what tech can't do is teach you how to read or speak. And if you can't adequately or, or efficiently give your message, then you it doesn't matter how good your hardware is or how good your stream is, you still have to be able to make that message clear and you still have to be able to make that message convincing. And I think that is the biggest thing about and i will now say our youth our kids that maybe they've <laughs> forgotten or that they don't understand that it's not they haven't they won't forget it they don't know yet they still need to read a lot of books to get a vocabulary so that they can give their message clear unless of course 
your message is small, huh, there you go. But you have, you still have to learn the basics and you still have to learn, you know, common courtesy and decency and you still have to learn, you know, how to, you know, how you need to learn how to get information. And I think that's something that, that, Tech does help, so that's not the, answering the question. Tech will give you information, but take the time to learn. Take the time to understand. So I, I hope yeah. that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, if I'm hearing you right, it's the messaging. Getting your message right, being able to communicate your message, and choosing how to communicate that message, that is, of course, that is something technology will never solve for you. That's something you have to decide for yourself. And of course, we smell a vision. Smell a vision, as yes, Tom, Tommy. As Tom pointed out, we need to get smell TV, in there. Yeah, when your TV can spit that smell out, then we're we're it'll change the cooking world. Yes, it will also <laughs> really change what a, a game of Bean Boozle would look like on online. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, guys, we, we, you know, we're, we're running up on our hour. You, you guys have been great on the show today. I'm going to encourage you. Do you have questions for Tom? Do you want to wait for, for not for Tom? Sorry, Tommy, I'm looking <laughs> at your name. Do you have questions for Mike? What do you want to know about um, with Lumens, technology, any questions about the LC200? Or do you have any questions for us about the, uh, about the GBT4 in wall? Uh, the, the new product that we featured right at the beginning of the show. And I did add the links to that as well, that we all can go check out the, the tech specs and all the, the manual for that online as well. So awesome. That's all there for you. Awesome. Cool. PM, thanks for uh, thanks for dropping the line. Academic and Esports Conference and Expo, October 19th through the 21st. We should be talking about whether we need to be there. Chicago's that would be a awesome. Great city, so. <laughs> and Richard, he's... <laughs> you need to get a booth, yeah. Uh, and Richard is... is Chiming in, the secret sauce for tech is managing the content, organizing, and uh, live and the VOD. So that really important. Um, thank you, Richard. I'm glad. I would. I'm glad he mentioned that because I'll I'll tell you a quick story about our our first version of the lecture capture system. I had a great big installation at a, at a college up in Atlanta, 10 units, 10 rooms. They were gonna record everything that happened all day, every day in that room. That was a great idea. And I begged them for, I needed to understand the next step. And the next step was content management and VOD. They never addressed it. And within a week, they were frustrated. They, they mm. thought that they could just roll this technology out. They could walk in, hit record, and they were streaming to different servers. They were streaming live on YouTube channels. And then the minute someone hit the stop button, there was nobody assigned to managing the content. And in some cases, nobody was even naming the files that were created. And now a year later, they're having to hire people to be specific content managements and to and to solve their their VOD demands and their just organizational needs and I think going into any kind of streaming video application or video streaming um, offering as a company that has to be addressed. That's a massive part of what's not part of your tech. Everything will stop and everything will need a file name. Now what? Mm -hmm. Very good point. And having that strategy. So in, in a lot of it, I think it's even more than just like the, the typing in the name, but building that strategy around what you're going to do with the information and how you're going to do it. Great point, Richard. And by the way, I love that you live stream jet skiing. I think that's awesome. Um, Tommy, yeah. Tom weighed yeah. in. Uh, he, he was the one who suggested we get the smell, but he said he doesn't want the jock strap smell of the uh, locker room. And I, I can kind of understand. Although, you know, with esports, you may, you may be, I, there's not, I was just going to say you're not going to have that jock strap smell, but I guess it depends on who's playing in the esports, <laughs> what the smell is going to be like. So uh, esport professionals out there take this into consideration when they start getting smells uh, into the, your, your shows. You're going to be required to really up your smell <laughs> work. Can't be grungy. All right, guys. Uh, very cool. You know what? This has been a great show. Uh, Mike, you have been in 
awesome, uh, uh, awesome guest on the show. This is what his fourth time with us, third um, or fourth? I think third. Third time, third yeah. time. Every time, every it's a pleasure. You're a fantastic guest. We love having you on the show. So, thank you very much for coming, Mike. Any last words? This is your 30 seconds to tell the world <laughs> whatever you want to say. No, I re I really appreciate you guys having me. I, I have a lot of fun with both of you. Your company is doing things that we noticed a while ago. You you stumbled upon us at a show. We had a great yep. conversation. We realized really quick that what with what you're doing and with where we want to go, there has to be some kind of conversation and, and some kind of sharing of information. So you've given us an application. We hopefully have given you one as well with our cameras, you know, to show the possibilities that are out there. Um, I think what you're doing is the direction that a lot of companies and a lot of people who need the information, what we need to be doing are, are these live streams and webinars. And I hope to, to be a part of that going forward. Um, if anybody out there has or wants more information about the Lumens products, there's the website, mylumens.com. We also are launching another website, um, Lumens Pro AV. I think is the, the URL. I'm not sure anything's out there yet, but we did acquire the URL. We're going to fill that thing full of products that make sense for video over IP. I think that's going to be, for Lumens anyway, the direction that we take the company. And we come traditionally from a document camera world. Um, we've, we've now moved in through uh, our pan tilt zoom lineup. From here, we're gonna develop everything from the the camera side all the way through the content and delivery side i i don't know where where we're going to stop but i know there's a whole host of products in between um and that is where we're going to spend our our development time that's where we're going to spend our our ideas if you have ideas or want to share or or even become a part of this amazing team hit us up um, I've been almost 15 years with the company now, and I'm almost 30 years in the industry, and I see no end in sight. <laughs> this is some fun, fun technology. I've always loved it. I've always loved the content creation and the production side. So we'd love to hear from you. And uh, with that, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mike. you, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you guys all out there, everybody out there, for your comments, for participating. Tommy, Richard, PM, Matt, you guys are great. We love having you guys here. So thank you very much. So you want to switch us to the last yes, screen let's here? Go for it. All right, and we'll drop this title. Uh, this has been a fantastic discussion. Thank you again, Mike. If you have any more questions or comments, leave them here. Just hit the 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 chats. Um, we're watching those lines, and we do respond. Whether you're talking on our webpage, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're at, we're there and we love to, to talk with you. So yes. thank you very much for coming. And as a special announcement, um, Tyler and I really do love doing this show with you guys and having guests that call in or visit in the studio every now and then. That's mm -hmm. always fun. This is actually officially our 12th month of live streaming here on Converge. 12 Community. months. Woo. We've made it a whole year and we really appreciate you guys, um, our audience. You make this possible, so we do want to say thank you so much. And let us know what you think of the show. What do you like? What have you liked so far? Or what direction you want to see it go? What do you see? What, what do you want to see more of? Fantastic. If you find our show interesting or helpful, please share it with your friends, colleagues, and even your customers. Hit that share button. You'll be surprised to find out that sharing these shows on your social channels or with your customers and partners will increase your reputation as an expert and increase your business. So, Maria and I will be back the first half of February this time. We're going to come in earlier in the month uh, from the Bixie Winter Conference in Tampa. We're part of the POE Lighting Pavilion, and we'll be streaming about new POE tech for intelligent buildings and offices and the new cool tech we find at Bixie. So, make sure to join us, and we'll see you at the next show. Thanks, everybody. See you guys next time. Very cool, yeah. Mike's a good cool. guy. I know you, you, some people comment, hey, we can still hear you. We know. We're kind of doing just the after show chatter <laughs> yes, here. Yes, we do know we're online still. Just because we're going to put the end screen up and everything. It's cool. Close it out. Wrap it all up. Yes. Well, uh, this is great, and um, I like that.
So Richard asks if we're going to be at uh, NAB. Yes, we're definitely going to be at NAB. We're trying to actually convince, um, we're trying to convince a couple of people to help let us sponsor some of the events. Oh, nice. And so yes, and uh, I believe Lumens yeah is in a, NAB. Yeah, I think they go um, annually too. Yes. And Tommy said huge improvement on the video and all audio quality. Oh, thanks, Tommy. Thank you. I appreciate that. No right. negative comments about my production, so I guess it went somewhat well. It went well. It went well. It was the first time. Believe me, it was better than my first time. Thanks, y'all.